welcome to Love Bites, the show where we debug romance. Now, I am not a doctor. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a patient. I don't have a degree in sociology or psychology, but what I do have is wealth of experience and a sincere desire to help you. Because sometimes love can get messy. Sometimes, if you're not careful, love bites. <coughs> hey everybody and welcome to Love Bites. How are you all doing today? We have our guest here, Jess Brohard. Jess, how you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I am good. So, um, first things first, what are your qualifications for this show? You are you're a licensed physician, right? You've, you've gone I to medical school? I did. I, I went to um, med school. I also went to orthodontal school, and um, I'm a licensed um, physicist as well, mm -hmm. both a physician and a physicist. It's confusing for some people, but I make it work, um, you know. Do you think and also I'm Oh, go ahead. I was saying I'm currently single, so that's my most uh, qualifying advice. Excellent. Do you think your licensed physicistness helps you with this? It does. It absolutely does, because... Um, you know, everything in everything in the world is uh, is is physics based. Mm -hmm. So even love, you know, even love, especially love. Wow, it's wow. love is a science if you really if you really think about it. <laughs> excellent, so, excellent. Yeah, cool. So we're just going to jump into our first question. This was one that someone sent just after the end of the show last week, specifically for Lena, who is on here. Yes. Um, but since Jess and Lena are buddies, I have figured Jess is capable of answering it on her behalf. Uh, hold, mm -hmm. bear with me for a moment. It's a little bit of a long question. I'm dear, looking forward to it. Dear Koivu and Ganjalina, I think celebrity crushes used to be something of fantasy and fancy, things that were impossible and that made them a little more harmless. Today, celebrity crushes, and I'm using that word flexibly here, are different. They post images of their daily life, they do live broadcasts, be it Twitch or Periscope or something else. What I'm getting at here is that my boyfriend watches your stuff, Gonjolina, quite a bit. It's been an inside joke that you're his celebrity crush, but I wonder at what point does that line become blurred in the modern technical world? Sometimes I feel the amount of content and the level of personal detail with it makes things uncomfortable. I'm not angry with you or upset with you as a person, but I'm frustrated that my boyfriend's downtime has so much of you in it. It's not like it's all day, every day, but it's enough to bother me. Thank you, and sorry, this must be as awkward for you as it is for me. That is a really interesting question, mm -hmm. actually. For a lot of reasons. Uh -huh. No, that, um, I guess my answer would be um e e celebrities or esports celebrities or you know um online personalities i would say are pretty much akin to celebrity crushes in that you know i have um you know that is a really interesting question for yeah um i've had people that have approached me and called me their you know fan or call, called themselves my fan mm -hmm. i think that's very flattering and that's awesome but it's you know they're always very respectful and there is a clear line, I think, between, you know, fan and, you know, pseudo celebrity. And so I don't think that, um, I understand where, uh, what was her name? The girl she that asked didn't give her name. She didn't give her name. Okay. Oh, that's right. fine. I don't want to impede on her privacy. That's a definitely a fair question. I can understand if she's having, um, concerns, but if you ask me, I think that, this her boyfriend's interest in lena is purely you know it's like okay everyone watched you know return of the jedi and mm -hmm. ruled over carrie fisher you know in her mm -hmm. slave leia costume and imagine carrie fisher one day like comes up and talks to him and says like oh hey nice to meet you and she's really pleasant and everything but that's like that's where it ends it's not like carrie fisher is going to seduce this fan mm -hmm. and mm -hmm steal him away from her, his girlfriend or something. And I think even though like uh, e-celebrities are maybe more accessible than real celebrities, it's in the end, you're still just, it's, it's crush, you know, and, and it's, this guy acknowledges it, that it's just a crush, you know, and that's human nature. You know, you can be in a committed relationship and you still are going to have those feelings of like, 
little bit of a crush, you know, a yeah. little bit of flirtation with, you know, people that you peripherally know. And I think it's kind of the same if you if you meet this like celebrity that you have a crush on. It's not like it's going to go anywhere. And I don't think the girlfriend has anything to do with it. Of course it's not going to go anywhere. But do you think that the level of personal detail... I'm not sure what sorts of things Lena posts, but... You know, I I have been fairly frank and candid and open with my stream. And that definitely increases the level of intimacy. And while nothing will ever happen of it, do you think that from... On the other side of things, people might get too obsessed with the content? I don't want to say obsessed with the content, but do you think that the personal interest might be, could get out of hand? I think- it can, but if, if that happens, it's on the person who is too interested, you know? Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with the the broadcaster or the person who's putting themselves out there. It's It's what the viewers take away. And if one particular viewer out there is developing an obsessive, you know, stalker-esque type relationship with a certain internet personality, then that's on them, you know? And I think broadcasters should not be at fault at all for that. And Lena is very upfront, candid. She's a very open person. And she shows a lot of cleavage because she knows that, like, that's what her viewers like. Because, let's face it, boobs are pretty. Everyone wants to look at them all day long. And Lena just allows her viewers to do that. And she is upfront, candid, honest, and frank with her viewers. And she says, like, I have a boyfriend, but I also know you guys like my boobs. So here are my boobs, you know? She's not misleading anyone. Mm-hmm. Huh? So. It's, it's an interesting question. Sorry, I'm rambling because I've been drinking wine. No. <laughs> 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 okay. Hmm. What do you think that our caller, our, our writer, should do about this? Do you think it's just like, you know what, you're not maybe not overreacting, but you know this oh, isn't yeah. actually an issue, don't worry about it? Or do you think there's like a conversation to be had with the boyfriend? Or what, what do you think should, how, how do? I think, um, honestly, I, I, I might uh, ask Melina if she wouldn't mind reaching out to this girl and just talking to her because Like, Lena's my best friend for a very good reason. Like, she's a very, very sweet, caring, open person. So, um, you know, honestly, if if this girl is really that concerned, then, like, Lena would have no problem just talking to her and just letting her know, like, hey, I understand your concerns, but you have nothing to worry about. It's just like, it's just like a dude, you know, watching porn, looking at Playboy. It's, you know, like... All, like, you know, the periods of my life that I've had a boyfriend, it's like, well, you know, sometimes he gets a random boner. And that's just, that's just, baby, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I, I would say that this, the same sort of thing could happen with a, a male viewer and a male broadcaster. And I would make exactly. that comparison. You know, oh, for sure. he could exactly. be equally interested in another dude and just be like, wow, yes. this thing's really interesting going on. It just happens to be that the person he's interested in is a female. And I don't think that, Yeah. like maybe in this situation it does, but I think that sort of connection goes all ways. Yes. And that there's yes. not really, like if you just take a step back and think of Lena yeah. less as a female and more of the celebrity crush that she was in this situation, like, it should be That's fine. absolutely true, yes. And, like, people develop, you know, like, man crushes and woman crushes regardless of, like, mm-hmm. their own gender or sexuality. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it's, like, idol worship is just a very natural human, especially an American thing. So it's really not surprising, you know. And I think that, like, if, you know, the the way that this guy acts toward Lena is the exact same way he would act toward a male, you know, internet celebrity or that he's a fan of. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Question number two. Dear Love Bites, please don't use my name. This is embarrassing enough to ask without having the whole internet know my specific problem. Okay. I won't Ooh. use your name. Don't sign your name then. Um, by the way, guys, if you sign your name, I assume you're comfortable with us knowing it and I will just say it out loud. So if you don't want us to know your name, sign anonymous or don't sign at all. Um, to your love bites, blah, 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 blah. My boobs are different sizes. 
I have been since I started growing in. My mom told me they would even out eventually, but I'm almost 18 and there's still a full cup size difference. Will they ever even out? I know it's normal for there to be some difference, but this is a lot and I'm afraid guys will think I look like a freak and I'll be alone my whole life. Is there anything I can do about them to make them more even? Thanks. Well, Let me take not... this one. Okay, it's all you. Um, short of plastic surgery, no, there is nothing you can do to even them out except um, acknowledging that boobs are awesome. So let's say you have two different sized boobs, right? Like one of them is really big. That's awesome. Neither of mine are big. Mine are fucking like pancake titties, all right? So be glad <laughs> that you have at least like one boob. <laughs> um, for real, real advice. <laughs> real advice. Real advice. Um, that's actually very common. Um, it's actually more common than people realize. And that's the thing about just... That's the thing about being human is that your body does weird fucking things and it comes in different shapes and sizes that you can't always control, okay? I have two different sized feet. It happens. It's weird, a, you know? Like a large difference or? No, no. Okay. I'm not a fucking freak, Neil. <laughs> um, no, it's only, they're about, they're about half a size different. Okay, um, yeah, that's pretty normal. Yes, exactly. No. That's average. Um, my eyes happen to be the same prescription, which is very uncommon. It's very, very rare to have your both eyes be the same prescription. Most people have one eye better than the other. Um, a lot of women have one boob bigger than the other. You know mm -hmm. what you do? You stick a nickname on that shit and you're like, yeah, lefty's having a real perky day. You know, righty's not feeling it. Yeah. That's what you do about it. All also, right. Humans are lopsided fuckers. Just be glad it's not like your eye or your fucking like a knee or some shit that people can actually see on a daily basis. Like unless you're a nudist and you're showing your boobs to everyone every day, which is fine. You do, you no judgment, but unless that's the case, nobody has to know that your boobs are different sizes until you actually make the decision to show somebody your boobs. And if you're making the decision to be comfortable in front of someone and to take off your clothes in front of them, then that is someone who you should feel comfortable enough around to know that they're not going to judge you or like you any less or value you any less of a person just because you were born lopsided. <laughs> also, as a guy, I didn't realize girls had uneven boobs until I dated a girl with uneven boobs. You guys can't really tell just looking at you walking down the street unless that's something you're specifically trying to contrast exactly. and compare. No exactly. one's really going to notice. Um, exactly. A cup size, I don't know if that's a huge difference. My mm. boob dar is a little off these days. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. And honestly, it's not going to be a difference for someone that you're hanging out with or someone that you're getting naked with. It, it, I would say it's less of a deal than if you had really bad facial acne. And someone who's going to give you shit for having really bad facial acne is kind of an asshole anyway. And that's boobs are boob lopsidedness is a significantly smaller problem than that. Like, yeah. seriously, it's, it's not an issue. You're totally fine. Okay. There's nothing to be embarrassed you, about. Like, if you encounter a guy who gives you shit for your uneven boobs, then you can take a wild guess at the number of boobs he's seen in his life and the answer is two lefty and righty yours one and two those are the only tits he's ever seen and that's why he's so salty about mm -hmm. them being not the same size mm -hmm. don't worry about it it's totally fine you're totally good I hope, she's watching. I hope so too i actually was sent about an hour ago so i think she is oh perfect i hope so okay and the other thing one last piece of advice for like uneven tit girl both mm -hmm. your tits are bigger than mine. Hey, yo. <laughs> Just keep that in mind and you'll sleep fine tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure a lot of our viewers will. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Love bites. I play whack the weasel three times a day. Is that too oh, so much? Also, how much porn is too much? My weasel seems to love it. How old is this guy? He didn't say. Look, okay. if you're in junior high... Beginning of if high you're school, in high, you have nothing to fear. Very like a low amount. That's don't worry about it. If you're like, if you're thirty and you're playing whack the weasel three times a day, I have concerns for you. But I'm <laughs> guessing that you are of the Twitch consuming age, so you're probably between the ages of eighteen and twenty four, and 
yeah, three times a day seems pretty healthy, to be honest. I I wouldn't be concerned unless you're hurting yourself. Um, yeah. Now you're, you're don't hurt the weasel. Just whack it, but don't yeah, hurt it. Yeah, yeah. Also, how Your much porn is hurt. too much? Well, I I if think you're... too much porn is at the point where you start thinking that's how people actually have sex and how people actually interact. Mm. At the point where you start thinking that's normal is when yes. you should kind of be like, whoa, back off. And if you're at that age where you're whacking weasels three times a day, you may not actually have had sex. So just as a disclaimer, that's not how things go. Yes. So it's just a heads up, when you order pizza and it's like a, a lady pizza delivery guy, she's not going to immediately be like, oh, hey, looks like you guys are having a party. Mind if I join? No. No. That's not how lady pizza delivery guys act, all right? That's just important. Mm -hmm. I just want to rip that band-aid off right now before mm -hmm. you have to face the harsh reality. Yeah. Yeah. Also, well, I don't know how detailed we want to get onto this, but the actions uh, done through porn are done to look good to the viewer, not necessarily to feel good to the participant. So if you expect your sex life to look like your porn life, you're going to be disappointed because it won't. Because if you yes. actually had sex like that, it really wouldn't be as enjoyable. Honestly. Honestly. Um, yeah. So, well, partially, but it kind, it kind of depends on the person, though. And I think, well, it, honestly, I think it's all relative. Yeah, know? I mean, there's. I just find that there is a lot less contact in places where there ought to be contact. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, I, look, there's, there's a lot of, like, guys and girls kind of separated so you can get a camera in there and look at things when really uh, if you're having sex the clitoris needs some attention guys yeah you know uh, it, it's not yeah. just um i don't i don't know how to how to say this tastefully uh oh say it distastefully then i would love to hear that look it's not just you know penis vagina collision 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 there's like a whole region around there that likes yeah. a lot of uh sensitive not sensitive but like likes a lot of interaction likes a lot of skin contact you know you want to make sure yep. things are getting done and you want to have you know th there's more going on there you don't expect yes. your actual sex life to look anything like porn you'll be disappointed in many ways well because porn is all about for the most part it's kind of catering toward like men mm -hmm. and it's all like visual it's like hey wouldn't that be great if a girl that looked like this did that thing to you you know mm -hmm. but then in reality if a girl does that thing to you it doesn't always feel good it just looks really good in porn yeah it's the sort of it's thing not. that looks good but is not necessarily always good sometimes it is you know it depends on what you're watching i don't really know um depends. but overall some subreddits both uh, look good and are yeah never mind yeah just, well that's fine um anyway so don't worry about it as long as you're not hurting yourself yes. physically or mentally i think you're gonna be okay uh, just wash your hands, please. Um, and don't be it off. If you live with your parents, don't be it off into a sock because they have to do your laundry and they know what's going on. Well, do your own laundry if you have to do that. Yeah. Yes. Just yeah. jerk off and do a fucking tissue and then throw that shit away. Please. I'm begging mm -hmm. you for the sake of any oh. future sons that I and, might and, make the mistake of bearing. And don't leave it in the room. Okay? Uh, don't leave those things lying around. They get gross. And sometimes they produce a smell, okay? Ugh. Do you yeah. guys remember the cum box incident on Reddit? Oh, please don't yeah, that think about that. Smoking. No, no, no. I, I still believe that that was a lie. I have nightmares about that at night sometimes. I... Anyway, uh, oh. if you guys are interested in asking any questions, please shoot off a question to koibu at realgoblins.com and we will get to it. Uh, if your questions are... Well, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just do that. It's fine. <laughs> Um, dear love bites, I am 17 and my girlfriend is a much bigger stoner than I am. I'll smoke from time to time, but she's an everyday sort of girl. Anyway, she asked me if I would have sex with her while stoned and well, I'm not sure. Should I do it? Is it safe? Um, well, I don't understand the question. Like, yeah, I mean, it's safe unless one of you has an STD. The whole stoner issue does not even come into that. Yeah. I've heard. 
that stone sex is fantastic. Um, dangerous? No. I, I've never heard anything about that being dangerous. Then again, I'm not a doctor, but I think enough people smoke weed that if it was dangerous, we would all kind of know about it. It's one of those yeah. like frequent enough things. Um, if you're uncomfortable with it, just have a conversation with her. Be like, sweetie, I'm not sure. This is a little bit weird. Maybe can we, you know, do this first? Or when, we, if we're going to do this, could we set some ground rules? Just like have a one-on-one. -on -one. Chat with her about the, the concerns you have. And then let her try and feel those out. Uh, yes. Well, in the end, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Yeah. That's all, honestly, that is the best dating and sex advice that I can give or the best life advice don't do anything you're uncomfortable with like if something if somebody is like try wants to do something with you that you're uncomfortable with don't do it and don't feel bad about it because everybody is different and everybody likes different things and you yeah. don't have to feel pressured into something that you're not ready to do that said I think that honestly you would probably enjoy it having stone sex with your girlfriend but if you're not ready to, or if you don't want to, then don't. And don't feel bad about it and don't feel pressured about it. You just have to talk to her. It's all just communication and honesty and openness. Mm -hmm. Communication is. is king. Just yeah. have a chat with her. Sort everything yeah. out. You guys can work it out. Having, It'll be fine. Yes. If you're having concerns, don't get angry. Don't jump to conclusions. Don't, you know, overreact before talking to her. Just talk to her. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's more important to communicate well than it is to be right or win an argument. So if you find yes. yourself being like, ah, she's going to say this, and then I'm going to say this counterpoint and totally win, then you're communicating wrong. Because you want to come to some yeah. satisfactory conclusion for the both of you. There's no like winning a discussion. That's why you shouldn't argue about these things. You should talk about these yeah. things because you don't want to... It'll, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Chat with her. You'll work your issues out. You either will or you won't. Um... You know, it, you'll be fine. I just like to point out to you guys. Do you see how like Neil hmm. is happily married and like? Yeah. Are you fucking surprised? Because I'm not. Like, look, he's talking about like, okay, be open, be honest, communicate with people. You don't want to like. There's no like winning an argument. Like this is like you supposedly are with the person that you love or whatever. So why would you want to be a dick to them or why would you want to feel like you? won something over them you know shouldn't you guys want to be like supporting each other and be happy making each other happy i don't know i'm just saying neil seems like he's doing marriage right thank you and i if think you guys I'm are not married then you fucking know why <laughs> sorry i'm drunk <laughs> dear love bites i have been with my girlfriend for two happy years and i love her very much we always hang out. We like the same things. I get along with her family. She gets along with mine. Those are surprisingly important details, guys. Um, it's like we're perfect for each other. That's Aww. not the problem, which is that lately I've developed a bit of a crush on another girl. I love my girlfriend. I would never do anything to jeopardize that, but I can't help but have these feelings for this other girl. I really don't want to have this crush, but I'm afraid of what it might mean. What do I do? Ooh. Honestly, Crush on another okay. girl. my first reaction is tell your girlfriend. Um, just because, again, I think we, we vaguely touch on this earlier. It's human nature. And I think that the key to a successful relationship is not, you know, um, long-term relationships. You're not always going to have that same passion that you had right up front. But you need to have, like, commitment, openness, honesty. And it's, it's, it's just biology that even if you're in a committed relationship, you're going to find other people attractive. You know, you can't help it. You're going to have those like random, like, oh, he gives me that, those butterflies in the stomach. Like, oh, he's really cute. And he's, you know, a little bit flirty with people, you know, as long as it doesn't actually go anywhere, you'll find that eventually that crush will fade and you'll fall back on that, you know, commitment and that, love that you have for your actual relationship and i think honestly it's it's completely harmless to have crushes as long as you like acknowledge them and kind of admit like this is a thing that happens even people that love each other get crushes on other people and that is completely fine because it's human nature it's as long as you exhibit the willpower and self-control not to actually act on those you find that what you actually have with your 
significant other is much, much better than any of these fleeting feelings you would have for this crush. Yeah, I want to roll back a little bit here. Uh, at the beginning, mm -hmm. you said you should tell the girlfriend. I'm not actually sold on that idea. I had okay. a, a friend once upon a time, no, no names here, who was dating this girl and had developed a crush on another girl. And he told her, and it kind of upset her. To the point that every week or so, she'd ask, hey, do you still have that crush on this girl? And he'd be like, well, yeah, still. And it kind of became an obsession, and it really screwed with her a lot. Now, granted, the crush in question was with that girlfriend's best friend. So that did change things a little bit. Right. But if this is a small enough... I think there's, there's a point where you tell someone, if it's small enough, if you're like, oh, yeah... I was like walking down the hall and I saw, did you know that so-and-so girl? Yeah, she was really cute. I think I got a little crush on her. Ha ha ha, whatever. I'm totally kidding, babe. It's not important. I love you. Like at the super small level, it's fine. You can talk about that stuff and everyone jokes and it's great. At the level where it's like, sweetie, I have a serious crush on someone and it's like becoming a problem for me is when you need to talk about it. So I think at the bottom of the level and at the top level, when it's meaningless or it means something, you need to have some, you, you should have a conversation about it or you can have a conversation about it. I think that middle area where you're like, I got a kind of a crush on this girl and I don't really want to have it and I'm not going to do anything about it, but it's like bothering me. I think at that point, if you tell the girlfriend, you're just trying to, like you're, you're leaning on her in a situation where you should be leaning on your friends. That's the sort of situation where you talk, talk to your friends about that and you don't stress your girlfriend out with that unless it becomes something big right. enough that you need to like, it becomes an actual issue. But everything else yeah. you said is totally spot on. You can mm -hmm. like develop small crushes on people that are totally meaningless and chances are mm -hmm. they'll go away. It's probably one of those yeah. things where like, you see a person and they say some cool things. They do some cool things. And they're kind of cute. And you're like, wow, I'm developing the crush oh, yeah. on this person. They, like, they tick all these boxes that you kind mm -hmm. of like fantasized about growing up. But at the know. same time, like you still only have a partial picture of them. And one day you're going to be hanging out with them and they're going to say or do something. And you're like, what? Really? Yes. Oh, yes. crush gone. Crush fucking over. I, that's exactly. happened to me a few years back. Many oh, years yeah, back. Yeah, that's happened to me. Where... So many times over the course of my life. Yeah, there was this this girl that I saw, and she was kind of cute, and she was like spot on, and she was into a lot of the same yeah. things I was into, and like and you guys like clicked on a weird level. Yeah, there was like just like weird, obscure interests in common, and you were like, it is, you know, it is something something in your brain. Something and there was like an easy communication. There wasn't any like overt flirting, yeah. but it was like with the people we were hanging out with, they were all kind of lame, and so we were talking a little bit more. And then uh, a couple weeks later. We were just like, you know, running into each other like we do. And she said, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was something of, on the lines of like, um, God, I can't. It was something like, I get sick a lot or I, I'm, I'm really, there was something like it was a health related issue, but not like I have this disease, but just one of those like, I think it was, no, I think it was, uh, we were talking about hiking and she was like, oh, my ankles are really like get really stiff and I, I can't go hiking or rock climbing because I was like, Oh really? And that um, it was one of those weird things. Like as soon as yeah. I knew that she was like, could, didn't do outdoorsy stuff and couldn't go hiking, wasn't interested in it because her ankles were like painful. Just, like, my crush just ended in an yeah. instant and yeah. she and I continued to be friends and it was totally fine. Yeah. But that, that like interest just vanished yeah. instantly. So don't yeah. sweat it, dude. You're yeah. going to be fine. Just yeah. like, don't focus on it. And what Jess said was really important. You have to acknowledge that it's a silly, stupid crush and that it doesn't really actually yes. mean anything. And then you can just kind of like take it for what it is, keep it on the side, don't focus on it, focus on the other things. Just like kind of acknowledge that it's there and it'll go away or it won't and it'll become a bigger deal and then you'll actually have to deal with it. But it probably won't. You're going to be fine. Don't sweat it. I think honestly, um, the movie 500 Days of Summer is one of my favorite movies and honestly it's i think it's a movie that everybody should see because especially for like our generation it's so so accurate and it kind of tells you some harsh truths because you know it's essentially like okay stop listening if you don't want me to spoil the movie for you but basically it's about this guy who like starts seeing this girl He's really into her. And then in the end, it doesn't work out. And she gets married to somebody else. And like, he's like really heartbroken about it. 
but then he gets over it. And kind of the point of the movie is like people get really excited about certain people and they like build them up in their heads and people, a lot of people tend to put other people, the, the, the people they're seeing up on a pedestal and you kind of have to realize that like we're all just humans and we all have our problems. We all have issues and nobody is perfect. So just like, don't get that excited about someone and don't get that upset if it doesn't work out because there are plenty of efficiency. Yeah. Yeah. We're just about at our halfway point. So we're going to take a break here and we're going to be back in like five minutes uh, with some more love bites and some more questions. If you have a personal question you'd like us to answer, please send an email to koibu at regalgoblins.com. I hope you can spell regal and I hope you can spell goblins uh, and entitle it love bites. And we will attempt to get to that if we have enough time. If not, we'll get to it next week. So see you guys in a few minutes. Bye bye. <laughs> 